Ciao friends! Beth with Thimblehooks. Thanks for stopping by to see today's project. Remember last week I gave you a sneak peek at my sweater vest. This is a pattern that I made so long ago. It was amazing. I had to go and dig and I finally found my old notebook. It is just full of post-it notes and ripped out pages but I finally found that pattern because I made it so long ago and I have so many notebooks full of notes and patterns and sketches and you name it but I found it so I had to recreate it because the original one that I made is long gone so I had to recreate so here's my cute little sweater vest and when I after I made it I was looking at these stitches and I'm not a huge fan of the slip stitch that I did right here in my original pattern so I switched it up just a little bit and turned it into this which isn't quite done yet, as you can see. This one isn't quite done yet. I have not done my ribbing on the edges, on my sleeves, or around my neck, but I changed it up. Right here I had slip stitches, single crochet, half doubles, and then doubles. I didn't like that anymore. Even though I made this a long time ago and I loved my pattern, I changed and I'm changing it up. So I changed it to this and these colors may look familiar to you. This is the same as um, a very similar color and a very similar design, design to the one that has been quite famous for. Emma Chamberlain wore it. So of course it's famous now. And all these great colors. But mine is diagonal right here and diagonal right here. I switched this up just a little bit and made it all straight straight lines but I did all that in order to get to this my daughter wanted which is the Emma Chamberlain so I had to go back through all of my stuff to find this pattern to update it to this pattern and then try to tweak it to get this this is not my pattern so I'm not going to be giving you a tutorial on this one because I did not design this one I just altered my pattern to make it work the Emma way it's close it's not exact. My ribbing is different. My stitch count is different. But the colors are basically what we're going for here. So I made that for my daughter Lily who is in a sorority and she's so excited to have it. But what we're going to do is this one. So let's get started. My cute little sweater is worked from the bottom up. Do the ribbing here first. Oh and I've got my four millimeter prim. One of my favorite babies. This is my favorite hook I think. There's three. Chain 26. Four, five, six. Three, 24, 25, 26. There's our chain 26. Now we're going to single crochet all the way back down for 25 single crochets. And 24. And the very last chain there is 25. So right here is what we're working on right here. Actually we're working on this one. But we're working on this part first. This is always going to be first so you can build around it. So what we've got here is one row. This is row one. Please remember that it really helps my channel when you watch the video all the way to the end. We need a total of 125 which is no fun. It takes a long time. This is the only one that's just going to be a straight out single crochets. Now we're going to chain one, turn our work, and we are working in the back loop only, single crochets all the way down. Back loop only, right in here, back loop only, single crochets. That's how we get our ribbing. Back loop only, all the way down. So there'll be 25 single crochet back loop onlys. And this is row two. 24 and 25. That last one is a little sneaky, but you'll find it. There's 25. So see now we get this little bump right here. Makes it a little bit of a peak. There's a valley on this side, there's a peak on this side. That's how we get the ribbing. That is a pretty standard way to do ribbing. And this is a single crochet ribbing. So we're going to chain one, turn our work, and repeat. This is row three. We're going to repeat that back loop only 
all the way until you get to row 125 total. So we chain 26, then we single crochet 25, and then we're going to do back loop only until our row count is at 125. So we're just going to keep doing that. Now I have done just a few, because this takes a few hours to do the ribbing, the rest of it is a lot faster, a lot faster. But here I did a few rows of my ribbing, and now I'm going to show you how, how we're going to make this into a circle with a not very visible seam. It's a little bit, little bit, can, you can see just a tiny bit, but it really blends in, and plus it's on uh, along the side. So what I'm going to show you with this little swatch how to turn this into a circle. So when you get done with your 125 rows, take and fold your work. This side is my original chain, right here, my original chain with my single crochet, right here, and here is where you would have row 125. I think I have row 10. But what we want to do then is fold this up. I'm going to go through this first stitch right here. Let's pull and pull that loop through and do it chain one just to lock that in place. Now go back into that same stitch one and the back loop on the opposite side in our real stitches because this is my chain, so we're going to go through what we can. And on this side are our last stitches that we made, so we're going to go through the back loop only, just like we were for the other 125 rows, for one. Go to the next, and it's the same. Back loop only in the next stitch, right there. Back loop only through both sides, single crochet. Go through this side again, all the way down. Through here, back loop only on the other side through the last row of stitches that you just made. And you will eventually have one that looks like this. 125 plus the seam we just made is 126. That is our final number that we need, is 126. And the reason I did that was two reasons. One, it's divisible by three, which I will tell you in just a minute why that's important. And two, if it's my daughter. So if you were going to make this, make this so it fits around you, or fits around your person. My daughter is almost 20. She loves tiny little crop sweaters. This fits her perfectly. So this 126 ended up being a really good number for my original pattern. Almost done. I have one more little stitch I have to try to get in here. Right here and that back loop only of this last green stitch. And now I have a tube right here. This is bigger. This is how big you want it to be. This is just an example so I can show you how we finish off this top. But this will be on the inside. We're not going to see this seam that we made just here. This one won't show. So I am going to turn this one inside out. Or right side out, I guess it would be technically. Right side out. This is our right side the seam is on the inside and you really can't see this all that much and this is going to be along the side of your pattern anyway. So technically this is where your sweater would be, right here. These are your sides and the arms will come up from there that way. All right, This is the one I'm actually making into a sweater. Now we're on the outside. This is the proper side. This is the side that's going to show. This part is important. So we started here with this tail 
don't have to cut this off, don't have to finish off this or anything. So once we turned it right side out, we're going to use that tail to evenly single crochet across the top of this all the way around as evenly as you possibly can to get to a total count of 126. I have five stitches left. So I have my first one is marked here and just as evenly as you possibly can. Now there should be one in each row, should be one stitch in each row, but it's really easy to lose count when you're doing this and working any of these bobbles, especially when it's when it's got a bit of a ridge like this when it's ribbing. So just count. This is going to be the big time you're going to have to count to 126 all the way around. But now I have 126 stitches and they're nice and even. I'm going to mark this. This one is this is stitch number one right here in blue, right here. And this one I'm placing is stitch number 126. So we have it all the way around. So that's our ribbing. Again, our ribbing here or the yellow. I'm making this one all speckly. This is a, looks like it's a green and a really deep purple with like an eggplant color. I thought that was a really nice color, so that's what I went with. Now we're going to snip, snip. Finish that off, put that color away for a little while, and just pull this right on through. Don't make a knot or anything like that. You don't really need to because we're going to weave in all those ends later and they will kind of disappear. So now what we need to do is you can see that this goes at a diagonal and so does this. The reason that we need this to be divisible by three is because we have three different stitches. These are single crochets, these are half doubles, and this is double. And when we turn it over, it goes double, half double, and single. Where the singles match up to each other here and here. And we're going to work in the round. I'm very particular about my my lines. Get nice, crisp, clean edges by doing this. We're going to change our color in the first round of, I'm using green, but we'll call it the orange. The first round of that, we're just going to go in here. We're going to go into our very first stitch into the back loop only. And I'm going to fasten on with my green. And now in that same stitch, I am going to do a single crochet in the back loop only. And I'm going to mark it. I'm just going to change my color so I know that this is where, it's, where start is. Alright, so there's my first stitch out of 126. All the way around, single crochet back loop only. Make sure you catch that back loop, single crochet. And again, I'm using a four millimeter hook. Very easy to change the size of this sweater just a little bit here and there without changing any stitch counts by just changing your hook size. So if you wanted it to be a smidge bigger, you can use a five as long as it works with your yarn. Or you could go down to a three or three and a half if you need it for somebody who's even tinier than my Lily, but she's pretty tiny. So we are going back loop only all the way around. And I will meet you back here at stitch number 126. And here are my last few stitches. Back loop only for our first round. Single crochet, back loop only, all the way around. And that's my last stitch right there. That's why I marked it so I didn't lose it. And there we go. Now we have this line right here. It's nice and straight. I'm very particular about straight lines and not having knots show and things like that. So that was an important part of my designing process is to make sure my lines are straight and crisp. Now I'm going to take my last marker out of the previous round and I'm going to mark that last stitch that I don't want to lose them and start adding extras. It's really easy to do. So that's why I mark everything. The very first row in every color change is going to be a single crochet back loop only. Right here, just like this. And I'm going to work my design in here and then the very last row 
is always single crochets. Both loops, not back loop only, but both loops in this orange piece. So green will be like that. So what we are going to do now is get your stitch markers ready because you're going to need them. We are going to slip stitch into our very first stitch and chain one so we can move up to the next row. Just like you would anything else, but we're working right in here. Right in here. So I am going to, in that same stitch, single crochet. There's one. Now I'll just move this out of the way for a second. Okay, the reason that this needed to be divisible by three is because I'm using three different stitches right here. I'm using single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. So if you divide 126 by three, you get 42. I want 42 total of each stitch in a stagger. This is where we start. Right here is our starting point because it's along the edge underneath the arm. Right here, there are 21, half of our 42 because the other half is over here. There's 42 here total. So we are going to mark out to 21. We are going to work out 21 single crochets. So there's our first. Once we get this row marked, you don't have to worry about counting as much. But there's one single crochet. This is through both loops, normal single crochets. Number three, we want to count up to 21. Four, 20, and 21. Now I'm going to mark that. That's my 21st single crochet. And we're going to want to know that in a little while. So this is right here. Just this first little edge. Or this first little piece of round one of our orange. Which I'm making into green and over here. And this one, it was kind of a peachy color. I think it was called tangerine, I think. But it's kind of a peachy color. So right here, here's orange, and here I'm doing it in green. The next set is this right here. So again, we want 42 total. Well, there's 21 here because there's 21 on the other side. So 21 half double crochets are next. One and half double crochet is yarn over, three loops. Pull through all three. There's two, three, twenty, and twenty-one. So there's number twenty-one of my half double crochets and I'm going to mark that one also. So now we're over to the other side. We are over here underneath this other arm right here. So we're going to work all the way. We want to work around this corner. Here's twenty-one. Here is twenty-one. So we want to do 21 plus the other side, the back side is 21. So here we're doing all of our double crochets at the same time instead of splitting them up like we did with the other two. So we're going to do 42 double crochets. The next 42 stitches are all double crochets through the normal stitches. Through it like normal, no back loops or anything, through both, both loops of your stitch. There was one, two, three, four. We want 42. And I'll meet you over right about here in a minute. 40, 41, and 42 double crochets. And we are going to mark that 42nd stitch. So we had, starting at the beginning, single crochets, half double crochets double crochets. Now we're at the back, double crochets. So now we have to go back to our half double crochets. So to make a total of 42, we did 21 right here. We're going to do 21 more half double crochets. 19, 20, 20 and 21. So there are my 21 half double crochets. I'm going to mark that 21st stitch. Now to finish it up, we have to meet up with our single crochets from the very beginning right here. 21 single crochets will meet us up to our very first stitch. 21 single crochets in all loops like normal. 
19 and 20 and 21 in that last marker. That's our last stitch. So I'm going to move my marker up. There's my 21st single crochet. So I'll just show that one more time. This is where we started. This is our edge. This is our seam. 21 single crochets, 21 half double crochets, 42 doubles going around the, around the side, 21 halves, 21 singles meets up with the original single crochets. All right, now we're going to do that. A total of four, so three more rounds, exactly what we just did. So what we do is in our first stitch, we want to do a slip stitch and a chain one, so we're ready for our next row. And in that same stitch that's still marked, I want to put a single crochet and move my marker. And now I'm going to single crochet until up to and including my next stitch marker. That way we don't have to count all the time. You just know when you hit your stitch marker, because you did count the very first row and you know your numbers were right, well they're not going to change. Your stitch marker is not going to move unless you do it. So we don't have to count to 21 or 42 or 126 or any of those things anymore. So here's our single crochet up to and including our marked stitch, because remember that was stitch number 21 of our single crochet group. So single crochet in our marked stitch and move our stitch marker to mark our 21st stitch on this round, which is round two. Keep doing that all the way around. Now there's half doubles, doubles, half doubles, singles, all the way around for four total. And then our last row is single crochet, both loops like normal, all the way around. That'll finish my green, which is I'm using right here for orange. I'm finish my green. I believe I'm going to use a pink next. Then I will change my color and do the opposite. Just like we did here. What I said before, every time we change colors is a row of single crochet back loop only. So that's where you start with the, with the next color after you're done with all of your green. And repeat this process in the opposite order so you end up with what ends up being a rectangle. So where the single crochets were, now it's doubles for up this color. Half doubles are always going to be the same. And where the doubles were in the orange, now they're half doubles in the, in the golden color. So there you go. You've got a few rows to go and I'll catch up with you in a little while. And we're back. Did all kinds of work here. I left you at the green. We were going to do this in the diagonal and do this one the opposite of diagonal. So that should be done. Now your last part that you're working in the round is one round 126 single crochet back loop onlys all the way around starting from right over here. That's your last one that's going to work in the round. Then we have to start doing little pieces like this one that I already did. But there we go. So you've done your green diagonally. You've done your pink diagonally to make a nice rectangle. Now we finished it off with a very nice edge right here with our purple. Back loop only single crochet all the way around 126 stitches. And remember we're going from, this was my original pattern which I have altered a little bit. Right here. My original pattern. You see how we're starting to look like it right here. It's very nice my original pattern and then I made it in the other colors because I altered my stitch counts a little bit because I didn't like the slip stitches, remember? So we've got all of these now, all these beautiful stitches with nice clean rows at the transition which I love. I hate when you can see stitches that I don't want to see. So this makes me happy. And then I altered it one more time so you can, instead of stripes this way, it's basically stripes this way. Chunk, 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 chunk. So I'll give you tips on how to do that at the end of this video. Just some tips on how you can change that into squares instead of stripes. 
Right now on this pattern, we've done our ribbing right here, and we've done this the green, which is the orange corresponding here. We've done the pink, which is the gold corresponding here, and we've done one row all the way around in our purple. Now what we need to do is we need to make panel A, which is this front part, and panel B right here, and then the back. So what we're going to be doing is this section right here and this section and then all of this is one section right here. So let's get started on our purple. On my pattern here that I already have mostly done, I'm also using purple. So that will help a little bit when I refer to purple. I'll be referring to purple on both. I already did panel A, I'm calling this panel A and this one that will be over here is going to be panel B. So for this sweater, there's a front and a back, obviously. This is the front, right here. So 126 stitches all the way around equals the front is 63 stitches, 126 and a half, and the back is 63 stitches. So starting right here to over here to number 63 is the front. So right here we want to count over. We're going to be using 29 stitches here in purple with the double crochets. So at stitch number 30, put a marker. And stitch number 31, 32, 33, and stitch number 34. Put a marker. You will not be working these quite yet, not until it's time to do the ribbing around your neck. And that's last, to cover up all of these edges and make a nice finished piece. So what I did here was 29 stitches and over here will be 29 stitches. Both panel A and panel B are exactly the same, which is very convenient. So once you have this one down, you just go and move over here and do the other one. So where we want to start, since this is complete, not the mark stitch, but the one right next to it is the stitch that we need. So we fasten on, and now our very first stitch is actually a double crochet two together. So in that same very same stitch that we just fastened on, go in with the double crochet but only finish half of it. Remember how to do a double double crochet two together and in the next stitch yarn over, pull through, pull through two. And we have three loops on our hook and then we're done. So that is a double crochet two together. That's important. At the beginning and at the end our double crochet rows through the pink. Our double crochet row is going to have a double crochet two together at the beginning and at the end. And now we are going to double crochet 25. We're going to double crochet all the way down until we have two stitches left. and those will be double crochet two together again. Remember both sides are a decrease. 24 and 25. And now you can see in this, group, in this grouping we have two stitches left and that is a double crochet two together. So yarn over, pull through, pull through two. Yarn over again, go through the next stitch, pull through, pull through two. Three loops on my hook, pull through all three. Now we're making the exact same thing as we made on this side. So chain one and we're going to turn our work. Once you get one side done, you can see what's going on right here. We're making a duplicate of exactly the same thing as here. So now the next row, because we're almost done with our purple, is a single crochet of all stitches all the way across the purple. which is 27 stitches. 27 single crochets all the way across our purple. 26 and 27. There you go. Now this side matches this one exactly. We're going to take our scissors and finish off right now. All you need to do is snip snip and pull this straight through. Don't make a knot. 
pull it straight through. So now we have all of our stitches. So for now this one we just need white to go here. So we're going to turn this over because we always want to start from the right hand side. Whether it's here on this side or starting here and make all of your stitches look the same. Alright so here's our white. We finished off our purple and remember when we change colors every time we've changed colors it is single crochet back loop only for the entire row. So we're going to go in the back loop of our very first purple stitch, fasten on our white with the slip, and in that stitch is a single crochet in that back loop only. And we're going to do that all the way across. There will be 27, 26, and 27. Now of course chain one. Chain one and turn our work so that we are ready for our next row. To get up that little bit of height with our chain one. So we have a chain one, we're ready to go. Now we have to decrease again just like we did with the purple. So we are going to double crochet into our first stitch, pull through, pull through two, don't finish that stitch because we're going into the next one. This is a double crochet two together, it's a reduction. So now we have three loops on our hook, boom, there we go, finish that stitch. Now we will double crochet 23 and the last two stitches down here will be double crocheted together. I'll meet you down there when it's time to reduce again. And 23. And now our last two stitches right here, boom, boom, double crochet two together. So yarn over, pull through two, don't finish that stitch, yarn over, pull through two, three loops on our hook, pull through all three. There's our double crochet row, exactly like this, exactly like this one. Now chain one and turn our work and we'll finish off with white. And that is a single crochet all the way across. Single crochet in each stitch all the way across. 24 and 25 total single crochets. And now we're done with white. And it looks exactly the same as this one. We're making a mirror image of it right here. So we can finish off our white. Give yourself enough that you'll be able to weave in those ends later and pull through. Don't make knots, just pull it straight through. And now it's time for multicolor. It's exactly the same. We're going to do a row of single crochet back loop only, starting on this side. Let's go into our first stitch right here, in the back loop only. We're going to fasten on our yarn and in that back loop, that same back loop, single crochet all the way across, 24 and our very last one is what we just finished off right in there, 25. So we chain one, turn our work. I'm sure you have uh, the sequence down by now, we've done it twice. The first two in this very first stitch right here and the second stitch we're going to reduce them and do a double crochet two together. So through two and the next stitch yarn over pull through two, three loops on our hook pull all the way through everything. And now in between we're going to double crochet again, double crochet 21 leaving these last two, two, <laughs> leaving the last two stitches to reduce and do a double crochet two together. In between there will be 21 stitches, 21 double crochets. And I'll meet you down when we reduce again. My last two double crochets. And we have two stitches left right here. Double crochet two together, reduce. So 
yarn over, go through our stitch, pull through, go pull through two, yarn over again, go through the next stitch, pull through two, three on our hook, pull through all three. Now we're almost done with this color again. See how quickly this actually goes up. Chain one and turn our work for our last round. Or our last row. Because we're not working in the round anymore. Now just like down here, this last row of the multicolor is single crochets only all the way across. And our last one is number 23. And now those match up too. So what we just did was there's the purple here, there's white here. We just did the black right here in this example, but we used a different color. So I'm going to snip and remember pull through. Don't make a knot, just pull it through. And now we're going to start the next color, which is a repeat of our purple. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did for the other rows. The first row is a back loop only, always. So in our first stitch, fasten on the purple and a single crochet, back loop only, all the way down. Twenty-one. There's our last back loop only. Twenty-one. I'm going to chain one, turn our work, and work on a reducing row. So we have our chain one in this first stitch is our half of our double crochet. So you have a double crochet two together. So there's our first reduce on this row, and there'll be another one at the end, and in between we are going to double crochet 19 purples. 19, 19, and two purple stitches left, two reduce with the double crochet two together. Chain one and turn your work and one row of single crochet to finish off that color. And 21. Done with purple. So we're going to finish that off again. Snip, snip, and pull straight through. Do not make a knot. You don't need to. It just makes it lumpy. We're going to have all these ends to deal with in a little while but it won't be difficult to do that because they're going to be covered up by our very lovely finishing edges. All right, on this side, this is the only place that it's going to change. When we get back up here to our pink and our green, we're trying to follow the original pattern right here. We are following this double crochet. This double crochet right here is double crochet right here. Now since this side over here is single crochet, this side is going to as well. And you can see that right here. Double crochets here, single crochets here. But then the next row, just like we did down at the bottom, this is the single and this is the double. So since we did double on this side, I'm going to do pink and single crochet on the other side. Right here. Starting in our very first stitch, as always, it's back loop only when we're starting a new color to make a nice crisp line. That is my very last stitch. Two, one, turn my work. And now remember, this side was the double crochet. That one was already done on section A, so we're on section B. This one is single crochets. So the first one is a single crochet two together, which is yarn pull through yarn over, pull through, pull through all three. Now single crochet down to the last two stitches and do another reduce. And 17 and then these two are single crochet two together. Chain one, turn our work. We're going to do the same thing again. There's 15 and our last two stitches are single crochet two together. both three loops on the hook. There you go. Chain one, turn our work, and one row of single crochet to finish off a nice clean line of this, this pink color. 16 and 17. Done. Done with this section of pink. So we can finish him off too. 
All right, so now we are done with our pink on this side, and you see that they're opposite of each other, just like here. These are double crochets, and this side is single crochet. These are double crochet, this side is single crochet. And this is our last time that we're reducing is with this pink. So our next one, green up here is single crochets, so double crochets up there. Start with the back loop only, single crochet all the way across to make a nice clean line. 16 and 17. All right, chain one, turn our work. And remember the side was no reducing, but it's double crochets. So in our very first stitch, still right here, double crochets all the way across. 16 and our last one on this row is number 17. There we go. Chain one, turn our work and repeat. Double crochets all the way around or all the way along this row. And 16 and 17. So there we go, we match. And now these match. You can see the height of these two combined is the same. These are doubles, these are doubles, these are singles, these are singles. And now we are done. We do not put a single crochet across the top here, nor did we do it here, because we will be attaching the back to it. When the back is done, that's where our seam will be on the top of our shoulders. So we can finish off this green and panel B is done. All right, the last thing we need to do is the back. Since this one, this part was worked in the round, we're all the way up here already, which is very nice. So all you're doing is duplicating what we did on our panel A and panel B, one long strip. So we'll do the first one together and then I'll let you have at it. But what's gonna happen here is they're gonna match up. See the purples match up? You can flip flop these, black on the bottom and white on the top here. So then they would do the multicolored where the black is. You can switch them up if you wanted to. Don't even have to. You can do anything you want with your stripes. But you see how they match up? They're exactly the same. And on the other side. So let's do the first one together so you catch the hang of it. So here's our first row already, our purple back loop only is already done and here's our stitch that we want to start at. Right here, this marked one. It's where I want to start. So just like we did on the front, the beginning of each row and the end of each row are both a reduction. So it's a double crochet two together. So fasten on your yarn here and we're going to do a double crochet two together. Just yarn over, go through, pull through two. Yarn over, go through the next stitch pull through, pull through two, three loops on our hook, boom. Now we're going to double crochet all the way across in between to the last two stitches. And the last two will be a double crochet together. So I'll meet you back down here in just a moment. Here's number 59, leaving two last stitches to double crochet two together and then chain one. Remember the front side was 63 so the back side is 63. We reduced here and we reduced here so here's two stitches and here's two stitches out of 63 that leaves 59 double crochets in between your reduces. Chain one turn our work, single crochet all the way across to finish off our purple. And 60 and 61, which counts the 59 double crochets and then the two stitches that were resulted from our double crochet two together. So our purple is done. So the next would be multicolored right here and then the white and then a purple and then the pink and then the green and then we will connect everything right here and do our edges. So go after the back of this and I'll meet you back up here when we can actually close our shoulders up. That will be almost done. It'll be so much fun. Okay, guys, it seems like this is going to be taking a little bit longer than I thought. So we're going to call this into a two-parter and I'm going to show you the rest of 
finishing this little sweater vest up tomorrow. I'll give you the tips and tricks for changing up your stripes and all kinds of fun stuff. So thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks and stop back tomorrow to see the rest of our sweater. Bye!